Tom here from Warren Systems and TrueNAS Scale 22.12.3 was released on June 13th of 2023. And of course, immediately I updated all of my systems. I had four of them specifically that I wanted to test before I rolled this out to any production clients we have. And today is June 20th of 2023 and I haven't had any issues. Well, I had one minor hiccup that I'll cover, but it's really not anything that I can reproduce because, well, one system kind of didn't work, but I don't know why. And all I had to do is reboot it and then it did. So outside of that really minor problem, which people have mentioned before, basically the Kubernetes side did not start, but I didn't even dig into error messages because all I did was restart the system again and it worked. So I'm going to call that problem solved. Moving on to the change log itself, there are some significant changes they made. There's some very welcome new features. It's nice to see all this progress coming along. So let's jump right over to the change log and talk about what changed and what some of those things that are being deprecated are, because I really want to talk about that because I was really confused and I hopefully will not confuse any of you talking about this because I think it's a good move deprecating some of these features. But before we get to any of that, I want to really look at this highlighted note right here. An issue was discovered with virtualization post-release when virtual machines with PCI password deployed, deploying upgrading 22.12.3 for details, C resolution. Do not upgrade if you need PCI pass-through. There's a bug report on this. They're aware they're working on a resolution for this. I'm not using PCI pass-through, so this did not affect me in any way in any of the systems that I upgraded. But just in case you have that use case, start there. Now let's actually scroll up and talk about what's new. New because they deprecated. So new applications for deprecation. I think they could have just worded it deprecated, but it's newly deprecated. So we'll go with that. Dynamic DNS, TFTP, OpenVPN, WebDAV, rsync daemon. This is the part that was confusing to me is when I seen that they were deprecating rsync. They're getting rid of the menus for rsync and I don't use them all that often. So it's not too big of a deal. But if you're using rsync modules and they're part of your workflow, those are going away, but they're not getting rid of rsync. You'll still be able to do rsync over SSH. You're still leaving rsync in the system. It's just that you're going to use it over SSH. And that's generally not how you use the modules in there. And there was always, well, the modules were a less secure way to do it. If you're doing it on your own network, probably not a big deal. But now you'll just have rsync over SSH as a methodology in order to do rsync, which is popular for usually migrating from a NAS system that's not TrueNAS over to TrueNAS. As far as systems that are both based on TrueNAS or both based on ZFS, you're going to want to use ZFS send or TrueNAS calls it replication, which is using ZFS send on the back end. That's the best way to copy files over. Now, the S3 and min IO, that wasn't too surprising. They were always a little bit behind when you're using it as a service. And the ideal way to do it is now with their application packages. Now, I don't use this too often. Anytime we've used S3 min IO, we generally build it on a native Linux system, not bolted into the TrueNAS system, partly because it was an older version, but I'll have to explore it. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll dig into setting up that as one of the applications within there. But nonetheless, it's not making a lot of sense to keep it inside of TrueNAS when you can get a newer version, especially when there's a lot of updates and a lot of new features changing. Because by the way, check out MinIO. It's just a really cool product. Multi-channel capabilities added to the SMB configuration form. We'll talk about that in just a second here, but this is a long awaited and at some point in time, we'll do a video on in the future where people who have pretty high end systems and want to be able to utilize the SMB configuration in order to do multi-channel to get more performance, more speed. That's definitely very welcome. The other updates are remote mundane, latest kernel. That's great. Updated Sama to 4.17.8. Hey, that's good too. Now, one more thing I want to focus in here is this release fixes a bug with data set encryption where it was possible to create an encrypted storage pool or data set and unencrypted data sets within that pool or data set. Beginning with 22.12.3, it is no longer possible to create an unencrypted data set when the storage pool or data set is created with encryption active. Data sets created in this manner will not be affected by this fix. The, if the original intention was for the data set to be encrypted, please migrate data from the unencrypted data set to a new encrypted data set. Now, this one very directly affects me, and there's a double reason for this, and let's talk about that. And it's a topic I've talked about before in the TrueNAS forums. And this is me talking about the latest version that this issue still persists. Essentially, there is a problem I ran into where I prefer to encrypt everything. That's kind of my default behavior. Why not encrypt everything? Until I moved over to TrueNAS scale and found that there appears to be kind of a bug. And that bug essentially is when you have encrypted data sets, 
it seems to go to a single threaded mode for reading data off there. And specifically, this TrueNAS scale system that I have here is where my video editing happens. And single core on a Intel Atom is not that good in terms of stream performance. So even though I have a 10 gig connection, I have SSDs, pulling the encrypted files is too slow. Once they're cached, they're quite fast and there's not a problem. Now they encode, as in when I write to the drive, has no problem using all the cores. And once you've cached it in ARC, there's no problem using all the cores. But this is kind of a weird bug that the simple solution was to simply not have it encrypted. So if you're using a situation like this, so you've encrypted, but then have nested data sets that are unencrypted as I did, and all I did was migrate all my data to an unencrypted data set, you can't create those anymore. But now I have to rebuild this whole data set. And it's not too big of a deal because I'm going to be migrating all the data over, reloading this system and cleanly building them without encryption and then I'll just encrypt the things as needed, but then leave this unencrypted, which I don't really care because my videos can be unencrypted. They all end up on YouTube anyways. So it's kind of a workaround, but I want people to be aware that this is a migration if you have a situation like I do. If you are using a faster system, you're just probably not gonna notice this problem. We aren't seeing this at all with one of my faster systems because it's so fast that the decoding in the processor isn't the slowdown for the data. So this is just something to keep in mind and consider. Now, jumping back over here to the TrueNAS system itself, we're going to go over here to our system settings and we want to look at our services. And we want to go down here to configure SMB and look under advanced. This is where we now have the multi-channel option. SMB multi-channel allows servers to use multiple network connections simultaneously by combining the bandwidth of several network interface cards for better performance. SMB multi-channel does not function if you combine NICs into a lag, read more in their docs. This will be a separate tutorial where I break down what SMB multi-channel is. Obviously you can just Google it and find out, but I'll talk about setting it up. There's gonna be certain ways you're gonna have to do that and I'll do some testing on it. As far as the other things in here, you will get the notices when you boot up and I've already cleared them so I can't show them. I didn't feel like looking at a red notice for a while, but under the services, things like rsync, which I have turned off. I believe if I turn it on, maybe it'll generate that notice again. So let me turn on rsync. Hey, here's the deprecation notice that I'm going to get. The following active service is deprecated rsync. This service is scheduled for removal and a future version of scale before upgrading. Please check. So there's your notice right there. And that's all I have for TrueNAS Scale. Overall, I'm going to say it's another good update. The product has really matured quite a bit. It doesn't seem to have as much quirkiness as it did before. Even that problem I mentioned where the apps weren't there on one system, rebooting it, fixed it. I've seen people post in the forum saying the same thing, that if the apps aren't there after an update, just restart it and then they show back up. But every subsequent restart I've done afterwards, which I did several just to see if I could repeat the problem, every time the applications have shown up, started up and worked perfectly fine. And the testing I've done it included the little Zima board that I've been working with and doing some testing with TrueNAS Scale. I'm almost done with that review and that updated versions has been running TrueNAS Scale from the old version to the new version and running applications on it without any problems at all. That's actually gone really smooth. And even though it's not as fast as some of the other systems I have, I'm still impressed with how fast it did the update. So overall, I'm going to say thumbs up for this update. For those that always love to ask about TrueNAS Core, has it been forgotten? Has it been abandoned? No, it has not. And I, there was a recent update to it. I just didn't do a video about it because there's not any significant changes in terms of like changes, changes, like new features being added. There's just lots of bug fixes going on because they're not sunsetting it, but they're really stabilized it. It's not where there's a lot of focus on innovation like there is with the scale out system because they've already built a really solid, reliable that we still support and sell platform, which is TrueNAS Core. It's still one of our go-to systems for a lot of high-end enterprise equipment we install where we've built petabytes of servers with targets for VMs or other workloads, such as especially a lot in the movie industry lately. So we still use a lot of TrueNAS Core because it's been proven and well depended upon. So I wouldn't say that product's going away anytime soon, but you're also not gonna see brand new, hey, we added and bolted on Kubernetes to BSD or anything crazy, because uh, that doesn't really work that way. That's not where that's going. Scale out is a little bit different application. So it's not dead, it's still going. And 
So there's still plenty of good support out there for it. It's just a very stable and predictable environment, which means people aren't looking to rock the boat with a lot of innovation. As always, before you do an update, remember Raid is not a backup. If you need a shirt to remind you of that, there's a swag store link down below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content from the channel. Leave your comments and questions down below or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion and thanks.